Financial Planner, Flow on YouTube. Greg, welcome back to the spotlight. Thanks for having me. Love hey. the show. Love being on. Appreciate it. Thanks for being here. And I just wanted to start off with uh, the gold and silver market, the precious metals market. And today we saw that the precious metals market, they were slammed down by 10,000 uh, contracts, came out of nowhere. And I wanted to get your take on the precious metals market. We're really not seeing it move anywhere. I mean, if we look at cryptocurrency, that's you know going crazy. But the precious metals market looks like the manipulation is continuing. Is this what you're seeing? Absolutely. And I've been talking so much about this lately on my own channel. I want everyone listening to me to look up the London Gold Fix. London Gold Fix. Um, most people I talk to who are even stackers have never heard of the London Gold Fix. Basically what this is, uh, Wikipedia actually has a nice article about the London Gold Fix. It explains how five of the largest banks in the world get together twice a day to fix, uh, in other words, rig the gold market. They set the prices. And in my opinion, whenever it starts to move above or below, uh, they start they start playing with it. We, like you had just said, they start dumping. And this is amazing to me. They start dumping large orders onto the market using a market order, uh, meaning, I mean, just to put a perspective on this for people that are not familiar with trading and how it works, nobody, I, I, I don't care who you are, is going to dump a large amount of shares of anything onto the market using a market order. When you place an order to buy or sell something in this market and you use a market order, order that means you're willing to pay anything for it or or sell it for whatever you can get what you would do what, what a normal person or institution would do or does do is put in what's called a limit order in other words let's say they want to buy shares of company xyz they put in i will pay this much no more it's called a limit order or I'm willing to sell my shares of XYZ. I'm going to put a limit order so this is my bottom acceptable price. When you see this kind of stuff, when you see large market orders dumped onto the market, you know this is fakery right being thrown in your face because what this individual or institution or group of people are doing is saying, okay, I want to get rid of, let's say we're talking about the paper derivative of gold here. And now I'm going to sell it and I'm willing to take anything for it. It's the same as if you were putting your Mercedes Benz outside your house for sale and putting a sign there saying, we'll take anything. Um, and this is done to drive the price down. Uh, we had a smackdown last Friday of silver we saw and gold too. Uh, and then they, they did rebound. I, I, you know, it's, the, the free market's trying to act here. But again, because of this London gold fix, uh, the markets are, are being rigged. What people need to understand, and it, you can see this, especially over the last two trading days, and I've been going over it, literally screaming about it on my own channel, is there is not one single aspect of this market that is not being rigged. The world central banks are rigging the debt market. The, uh, the the London gold fix, these five major banks are rigging the gold markets or the anti-debt. And the stock market itself is being rigged by the banks. I mean, we just found out that the Swiss National Bank uh, owns almost 100 billion of U.S. stock. Um, these other central banks are doing the same thing. They're all playing into this. They're propping up the market. Um, it's not real. There's nothing here that has a actual price discovery mechanism whatsoever behind it. And and I think, unfortunately, because of this action, we're going to see a, a, a horrible event occur when the market does decide to do its job. And that is to determine the fair value. It's, see, they're going to blame the free market the next time this melts down and it will melt down. The, you're going to have all of these people on the mainstream who don't know up from down or from everything else blaming the free market. We don't have a free market. If we had a free market, it would be a real price discovery mechanism behind these things and they would be priced 
fairly. When you have world central banks doing what they're doing, the London Gold Fix doing what they're doing, and central banks and other banks buying up the stock market, nothing is real. Um, it's unprecedented. We've never seen this to this degree in, in world history. So it's not just the gold markets. It's every other market you can think about except for one. And you mentioned it already, the cryptocurrency market with the block chain. The blockchain cannot be rigged. That's why they want to start a futures market for Bitcoin so they can rig it. Um, the blockchain is the only thing right now keeping cryptocurrencies in an actual free market. And that's why you have the mainstream financial channels going off the deep end. Uh, Kelly Evans the other day from CNBC was saying that the, that central banks should get involved here and start regulating Bitcoin. This is what she said. I mean, the woman probably, uh, I don't know if she can walk and chew gum at the same time. She can probably read a script. That's all she does. But uh, I, I actually can't believe, when she said that, I literally, literally almost fell out of my chair. So again, there's no aspect of this market except for the blockchain backed assets that have a price discovery mechanism that is being determined by the market. I just wanted to go back to uh, the Swiss National Bank where you said, you know, they own a lot of the stocks in the stock market. And I hear, I, I know a lot of people hear about this and I don't think they understand what they're actually doing because, I mean, in, you've been working with the stock market for a very long time. You work with, with financial institutions. Have you ever seen any type of central bank or bank own the amount of stocks? I mean, most of it is the tech stock uh, area, like the fangs. I mean, have you ever seen anything like this? And w why would they have to do this right now? You know, that's a really interesting perspective, and, I'm, and I, I talk to a lot of people about it. I think right, the markets are so distorted at this particular point, and every, everything, again, is so um, uh, 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 twisted out of where it should be that if they were not doing what they're doing and this market were allowed to, again, do what it's going to do at one particular point, that is to determine fair value, nothing would be where it is right now whatsoever. Does anyone here listening to this believe that the, that the debt market would be priced where it is right now, that bond yields would be where they are right now? Of course they wouldn't. As a matter of fact, we are in no man's land when it comes to bond yields because nobody, nobody is smart enough to know what the actual value of debt would be in this environment of money printing uh, and adding digits to a screen into infinity where world, literally, where world central banks continue to do this and buy back debt, buying everything. No one can price the debt market accurately. Nobody, I don't care who they are, how many letters they may have after their name, can't be done. So knowing that the debt market is so false at this particular time and you can only imagine the distortions that exist in other asset classes. I mean, for example, let's look back at precious metals. So we got this London gold fix. They will not. They're setting the price of gold. Uh, they're they're going to keep it in a, a range. I mean, this is illegal. They, I mean, how are investors are being harmed here? They're being harmed. But nobody is batting an eyeball at this. World central banks continue to inflate. They cannot stop. Ever. So if you were to look at, for example, the, the the price of gold and silver right now, I mean, these are are suppressed by exponents, exponents. Gold should be at least the cost of Bitcoin today uh, and silver, you know, maybe 500 uh, probably or, or more. These are what these actual prices should be. But because of the gold fix, there you, you're not seeing that reflected in the market. Because of the suppression of the debt markets, you're seeing an inflated stock market that would be cut in half in a day. In one day, we would watch this market lose half of its value if the market were allowed to determine fair value. There, Of course, there are buyers on one side and there are sellers on the other side, but the market is not real. Um, all of these, the price action is being dictated by what central banks are doing with, with interest rates, what, what these five major banks are doing with precious metals, and the rest of this market, that the fact that it's being bought up by central banks, by banks themselves, 
This is this is so much going on here. Stock buyback programs, and I'll tell you something else that's going on here, and it's going to get attention at one particular point. It's accounting practices. All of these supposed earnings that are coming in that are that are beating the street and everything. It's not real. So, and they have that, and now that if one company is doing it, another company is going to do it, and it's going to go on so on and so on and so on until. You know, there's something that breaks here. Say, okay, hold on a second. We got to go look at, you know, the, the books. You mean like Enron, for example. They were fudging everything. Every company right now, every one of them, probably Apple included, is an Enron waiting to happen. Because I do not believe that these numbers are real. Um, because nothing in this market is real. It's all being faked. It's all being manipulated. Um and there's really not much else to say here. It's just absolutely insane. Now, the Fed is continually saying that, you know, they're looking at inflation. And you keep on saying, you know, we should look at the bond market. That's where we should be looking. And from everything that you've been seeing, and, and we, I mean, you hear it on the corporate media, the financial uh, stations, the financial pundits, where they're talking about the yield curve, where it's flattening, sometimes it's inverted. I mean, isn't this a sign that something bad is headed our way? Absolutely, and it's, it's unbelievable. The, they're whistling past the graveyard. Uh, the yield curve, I've been screaming from rooftops about this for uh, as long as I can think about right now, a very long time. The yield curve is flattening out, and if you notice what's happening to the financial sector, uh, it's, it's selling off here. The financial sector is the largest sector of this market. And banks, I know there's, a, I mean, you listen to the mainstream people and they're telling you, well, I'm bullish on the financials. Really? Why would you be bullish on the financials when we have a yield curve that continues to flatten out, which means very basically, to, I mean, we're talking about like economics 101 or finance 101. If the yield curve is flattening out and banks are lending out cash at suppressed rates, they're not going to be able to make money and survive in this environment. That's why financials have been selling off like this for the past couple of days. Uh, it's and it's not going to stop. The the flatter the yield curve becomes, the harder it is for the banks to to make money. Now, just you know, with a little bit, a few clicks, people can understand that this flattening yield curve is a very bad. I did a whole video about this. Um, this is a very ominous sign from the bond market because every time we've seen this, where the yield curve flattens out and then eventually has the potential to invert. Um, we end up with a meltdown. The last two meltdowns unfolded the same exact way. And we're watching it again like a slow motion train wreck. But meanwhile, you know, the, the, the mainstream channels, they don't care. They're just sitting there. They're whistling past the graveyard. It's so funny watching the, the, the stock market action. I watch it pretty much around the clock. But, you know, I'm sitting at my trading station all day. I'm watching CNBC. And today, for example, when the Dow Jones Industrial Lab was down over 250 points, they have, they're they having commentators coming on and, and people talking about how the market is doing well, uh, you know, trying to distract people. Because if the market were up 250 points, they would be doing cartwheels all over the office. But they're using their distraction tactics. They can't allow people to see what's going on. They got to keep people calm. They got to keep them in line. They got to keep them like sheep. And that's exactly what they're doing here. This flattening yield curve is a screaming sign that something bad is on the horizon. And it's going to be way, way, way too late for people to get out um, when this starts to really roll over because it's going to happen very, very rapidly at one point. So we got to watch that bond market. I mean, the, the, the action in the bond market dictates what's going to happen in every single other market. Everything prices off of what's happening in the bond market. And I tell, you know, I set up, I set this up on my website for anyone that's interested. On the right side of the page is a, a chart of the bond market in real time. So you can watch this in, in 15 minute intervals and, and get a handle on what's going on. Today, for example, was a very bad sign for this market that no one is paying attention to. We had bonds sell off rapidly at the same time stocks were selling off rapidly. Generally, there's the you get the safety trade, which is when stock market sells off, you get a move into the bond market. So now we have a simultaneous sell-off today. That is 
something people need to pay attention to. Uh, and I talked about this today. So we're going to need to watch how this plays out because there's going to be a point, and I've been speaking about this for years, and now it's Alan Greenspan saying the same thing. It's billionaire hedge fund managers saying the same thing as Greg Manorino now that the debt market is in a bubble. We're going to have a point where it's going to sell off rapidly. And when the, and we can see what happened today. Sells off rapidly, puts pressure on the stock market, and they dive together. And then eventually at one particular time, this cash, which does not go to money heaven, is going to make its way over into into commodities and i don't care how much the london gold fix they want to fix it it's going to start they're going to have no choice here but to allow fair value to be achieved with the metals look what they're doing why are they not why are they fixing quote unquote the price of gold because if because it's, it's protecting the petrol dollar anyone who, i think your, your listeners are smart enough to actually have an understanding of that they're rigging this to protect the dollar, to protect the petrodollar. Because if, if gold were all of a sudden were allowed to hit fair market value, well, people, c countries are going to want to be paid in gold, not in every depreciating uh, thing, uh, like a piece of paper with numbers printed on it. It's insane. But that's what's going on here. And that's why the London gold fix exists. Now, the Fed is out there and, and they're starting to unwind their balance sheet and they want to raise interest rates but what I mean, we've heard this before, but what's very interesting is that the report from the Treasury came out and China is not the country that has the most U.S. Treasuries. I mean, they have about one point two trillion. The Fed has purchased around two point five trillion worth of U.S. Treasuries. Is this because is this I mean, the reason for this is, is it because there's no one out there that wants to purchase the U.S. Treasuries? Who in their right mind, seriously, think let's let's put a perspective on this. Why would anyone want to buy a treasury from from first of all, rates are supposedly going to go higher here. Okay. So why would anyone want to buy a bond here um, that's paying less? than what you could buy maybe in a couple of weeks. Does it make any sense to anybody? Of course not. The Fed is stuck. Um, and I'll tell you something else with regard to their bond market or their, their bonds that they're holding or their balance sheet and everything else. Uh, supposedly, they started their unwind. Well, what has it done to the yield curve? We're seeing it flatten out. Everyone was saying, oh, when the Fed is going to when the Fed unwinds their balance sheet, we're going to start to see the yield curve you know, get more normal. I said publicly it wasn't going to happen. I told everyone that the Fed is going to get it wrong. And guess what? It's happening right before our eyes. The Fed is not going to get this right. They never had a plan to unwind this. They still don't. This is literally where no man or no woman has gone before. So they have no idea of how the market is going to accept this moving forward. There are no models. So the Fed is flying by the seat of, the, of their pants, period. And they're going to get it wrong. Why do I know they're going to get it wrong? Because they always do without fail. So this has the potential here. Again, this isn't Greg Manorino anymore. Don't listen to Greg Manorino anymore. Start listening to the multi-billion dollar hedge fund managers and people like Alan Greenspan, who are saying the same thing that Greg Manorino has been saying now for years. But don't listen to me. Listen to these guys. Uh, and they're, they're going to explain to you how, how this has the potential to unfold in a very, very disruptive way. Now, can they reverse any of this? I mean, if they see this happening, um, like it's happening right now, can they all of a sudden stop and, you know, lower interest rates? I mean, will that help the situation? <laughs> of course not, because that's the whole that's the whole issue right there. The issue is the fact that we've had artificially suppressed interest rates now for almost a decade. That has allowed this malinvestment across the board and bubbles, bubbles to form everywhere. All we need is for one of these bubbles to crack. Because every bubble that exists, and there are multiple bubbles, is dependent on the one next to it. So you're going to get a series of bubble bursts. Boom, 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 down the line, just like that. That's the potential that we have here. It's going to unfold in a very ugly way at one particular point. And I think, like I've been saying, 
It's going to start in the debt market or the bond market. This is Everyone's looking at the stock market. Oh, look at the stock market. We're hitting all-time record highs. Oh, look at the stock market. This is what the distraction is. They want all of the lemmings to sit there and look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average and forget the biggest market of them all, which is the debt market. Oh, don't look over there. Look over here. Um, and, and, and people are just so damn dumbed down that they just follow along and uh, and they're being led to the slaughter here. There's no doubt about it. They can sit there and look at their 401k plan, but if they understood that there's no real price discovery mechanism behind it right now, that it's literally a Ponzi scheme, well, we all know how Ponzi schemes end. So those people that are looking at their 401k plan, their pensions, and and, and everything like that, if, if the stock market, if the bond market you know, if, if it comes down, yeah, I mean, think about it. Nothing. They'll be left with zero at one particular point. Look, right now, this is what I tell people to do. Just have a perspective on what is happening. Think about what you need to do to try to benefit from this. Um, and, and, and if you can figure that out and get on the right side of this, you have a, high, a good potential of, of getting through it. But most people are going to sit there and, and, and let this thing melt down around them like last time in 2008. But this time is different because the Fed cannot do anything. It's done. They can't re-stimulate, reprint, rebuy, redo anything. It'll, be, it'll have to lead to a new system, which will be in their benefit. Look, they know they're not stupid. They know where this is going. And they're all getting themselves ready for this, on the, getting themselves on the right side of this. Uh, I am more than certain of it. So um, it's it's the people that are going to suffer once again, like they always do. And this is throughout history. Uh, and while the few benefit from it, most people are going to just get killed here. It's very sad. It's very sad to see. But um, take advantage of it. I mean, if you're a trader, this is the golden age for you. Uh, you're, you're reaping the rewards of this market. You're taking that cash out of there. You're converting it into other things. Um I, I really feel that's the way that people need to look at this, understand that the environment is fake, but they can take advantage of it. Um, and that's really why I'm out here for the most part, trying to shed a light on these things, because they can, they, people aren't going to hear this from anywhere else. They, I mean, from any of the mainstream channels. Yeah, OK. These people over there, they're reading scripts. They're told what to do. A lot of these people are not that stupid. And that's really the truth. Um, but they have no choice but to follow along, to keep their jobs, to do what the, to do what they're being told to do, uh, unfortunately. But I think I, I would never whore myself like that um, I, for any amount of money. I just wanted to switch over to uh, the dollar for a, a sec here because we see the rise of the petro yuan where Venezuela is going to be dealing with the yuan. We see Iran is going to be working with Russia with the petro ruble. What does this mean for the dollar if everyone is starting to move away from the dollar? What do you see happening to the dollar? <laughs> the same thing that's been happening to the dollar for decades is going to continue to bleed off purchasing power. It's probably this whole thing is probably going to lead to a war, more war. I mean, you can already see it. Everyone's setting up. They're putting their pawns in place. Been doing it for a very long time. We've already fought wars to establish the petrodollar. Um, and they're, they're, the central banks, the Federal Reserve is not going to give up that power. Uh, just like that, They're, they will fight for it. And that means aircraft carriers, missiles, submarines. I mean, that's the enforcement arm of the Federal Reserve. So um, they will not give up their, their product without a, a fight, without a lot of blood being spilled. Unfortunately, a lot of the younger people um, will be stuck into that. I'm too old. Um, but I would gladly take up arms, let me say that. But seriously, uh, absolutely. You know, we're witnessing a currency war. Uh, uh, Jim Rickards has explained that um, uh, pretty, pretty vividly. The the death of the petrodollar, the suppression of gold. That we all understand why that's going on. The rigging of the debt markets, the rigging of the stock market. Um, it's it's all going to reach a fever pitch at one particular time, and it's only going to take one domino, one to fall. And then the rest are going to just cascade, pow, 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 down the line. Um, it's going to be an epic moment. And I, I, I don't know when it's going to happen. I don't even speculate anymore. Um, I just am aware, and I think people are, I'm sure your listeners are, that it is going to unfold in a very disruptive way. Just be ready for it. So that's all I have to say. 
I think we have a, a, a in a worst case scenario here, like I've been mean, trying to explain to people, we have a human bubble, uh, uh, which has been created on the back of the debt bubble. So we have the we have the potential to have a mass, mass, mass loss of human life on a global scale uh, when this comes down. Do you think at the point when this is coming down and um, we're starting to rebuild, do you think this is a, a time where we can use the crypto market, the blockchain technology to take control of the currency to take control of, you know, the whole entire financial system and remove it from the central bank? Um, no, I don't. Unfortunately, I don't. I, I wish I'd like to see that happen, but they're too strong. They're too powerful. They will kill and crush and do whatever they have to do to as many people as they need to do to keep their power. The power of world central banks exists in their ability to create debt. That's the only thing that they do. That's how they can control everything is by this one single mechanism. Things like blockchain backed cryptocurrencies is, is not really a unit of debt. People don't understand that. And right now, with the talking of creating a futures market, this is a way they're, they believe me, that they're thinking about ways to rig it, a way to control it. Because that's how they control our lives, is by controlling the cash. Every single one of us listening to, this, listening to this right now, in one way or the other, is a slave to these central banks. If you are accepting their product or transacting in their product, you are a slave. And there's no way out. There's, it, they are too strong. It is too big. Um, and when this whole thing does come down, they are still going to exist. Uh, and in a worst case scenario, there'd be a lot less people for them to control. Um, I'll tell you, I really hope I'm wrong on all this. I really do. But um, it just seems like there's no way out of it. Um this system is toxic. We all know that. We've been hearing about it for most of our lives, that the debt is not sustainable, um, that things are not sustainable the way they are. And they're not. It's it's the debt-based economic model that demands that debt be barred into existence in perpetuity. Once we can't do this anymore, the system collapses. So they have to find more reasons to borrow cash into existence. If that means they need to start another world war so they can borrow cash to fight that war, that's what they will do. So this is their plan, period. Uh, is world, it, and it sounds like a, it should be a movie. It sounds like world domination. They've already won. They've already won. People have been dumbed down and made to, to, to work like slaves around the clock so they can't even think about the stuff that we're talking about. A select few people, and this is why I've been saying for years that a natural selection process is occurring, are able to understand these kinds of concepts, can put this into a perspective, because I'd be willing to bet that if the average person were to sit here and listen to this, um, they first of all wouldn't be able to process any of it, because again, it's outside their paradigm, it's outside their thought process, this is outside the box, what we're talking about, and they have all been stuffed into this box. So this is why you can't, you know, you can't discuss this with most people, they have no idea of what is going on. They have no idea um, that they themselves are, are slaves to the world's central banks. Are, and uh, it's just not going to stop. It can't stop. Um, unfortunately, we would need a coordinated worldwide revolution where a lot more people started opening their eyes. For, and maybe that would happen because the enforcement arm of these central banks is the United States military. Uh, that's the Federal Reserve. And every other world central bank has their respective military um, at their beck and call. And that's how they will enforce their product um, down our throats for in, in, until... Until I have no idea, until I think forever, I think we're kind of stuck here. What can people do to protect their wealth, to protect what they have? You know, look, I think what we need to do is is try to band together with more people who understand what's going on here. 
um, and you know, and 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 try to adu- and try to understand that they are going to try to separate us by every single. That's what they do: separate us by race, by creed, by sex, by whatever they can do. Um, that's how they can keep people in line. If we understand their agenda, um, and we and we don't play into it. I think we'll all end up a lot better off. With regard to wealth, uh, I still believe in hard assets. I've been saying this since day one here. Um, get out of their system as much as you possibly can. Um, you know, we unfortunately have to transact in their product right now. Um, you know, I would love to see more people starting to transact in gold and silver, uh, in, in, in cryptocurrencies. Um, a lot of places are starting to accept things like Bitcoin. Uh, if someone wanted to buy some assets from me, I would gladly accept gold or silver. Um, you know, I think this is what people need to do. Start to transact outside the system. And uh, only keep what you need to transact with regard to their product. Um, and the rest of it, put into other assets. Um, own things. I mean, that's that's the key. The key to, well, you know, look, people live in debt under an umbrella of debt and they keep continuing to find ways to bury themselves under more debt you need to get out of that you need the only difference between a wealthy person and a one that's broke is the wealthy person owns things the other person pays them off little by little and it's the system it's designed to do that that's why on a macro scale, the United States is the biggest debtor nation the world has ever seen. Its citizens are the most indebted as well. Um, it's the it's the way the system is designed. It's it's an it's a terrible thing. But I don't know what to say about this. It's um it has the potential to really wreak havoc on the human race. So knowing that, knowing what their plan is, and their plan is seriously um, to dominate the world um, by having every Every living thing uh, live under the crushing weight of debt. Um, well, you know, it's just not going to change. And there are going to be a very select few who benefit from this, while the rest of the people get crushed like bugs. So, I don't know. Wake up, people. That's all I have to say. Greg, thank you very much for being on the X22 Report Spotlight. Once again, how can people see your work? Go to my website, traderschoice.net. I have it all set up for people so they can understand these markets. They can watch the bond market in real time. They can watch Bitcoin in real time. They can watch gold and silver and, and everything else. Put a lot of work into it. I hope people utilize that, utilize that resource.